Hello, let's talk about recent improvements we made in Windows platform support. I am Maxim Lukianov, product manager working at Microsoft in Azure AI platform team. Some of you might wonder why Microsoft is talking about PyTorch and Windows. Let me clear this up. Recently, Microsoft has become a maintainer of PyTorch and Windows. Our goal is to improve quality of the Windows platform support so Windows users have great experience building AI applications on the platform of their choice. In this segment, we'll talk about uh, recent progress we have made in uh, enabling various features of PyTorch on Windows platform. The recent, uh, one of the major features uh, that we have enabled in the current release uh, is distributed training. So we'll talk uh, a little bit about that. And we'll also demo how distributed training uh, works on Windows. But first, let's talk about why we, as a PyTorch community, should care about uh, Windows platform. According to uh, latest Stack Overflow developer survey, Windows remains to, uh, to be most popular operating system among the broadest audience of developers. And this might not be the case for today's uh, PyTorch community, because today's PyTorch community is biased toward, more towards professional uh, researchers who are comfortable working with Linux and macOS. But if you look into the future, uh, if you look into the next set of users that we would like to bring to PyTorch, then Windows users would be the greatest, uh, the largest set. And this is further confirmed uh, by our own uh, user research. If you look at the LinkedIn profiles, then the number of machine learning professionals or people who claim ML proficiency on the uh, LinkedIn profiles, and but who don't have PhD degrees, is seven times larger than the number of PhDs. And even more so, in the last year, this number of non-PhD ML professionals have grown uh, almost doubled in the, in the last year, while the number of PhDs obviously haven't grown that much. So this means that uh, potential future users of PyTorch are uh, software engineers and analysts, and those users who, who have uh, great care for uh, Windows platform. Let's talk about the state of PyTorch. First of all, PyTorch and Windows uh, is a community effort. And through this community effort, we have achieved fairly good uh, state, actually. In terms of breadth of coverage of various features of PyTorch, we have, a, uh, as you can see from the table, we have a good coverage as well. Uh, there are some uh, gaps when it comes to the depth of coverage of the features, and so we'll need to do uh, a little bit more work there. The original acknowledgement should go to Jie Chen Pu, uh, who was the original uh, author of the, who brought the Windows platform support to PyTorch. He basically single-handedly implemented original uh, Windows support. And he recently also added Torch Audio uh, uh, support as well. Uh, on our side at Microsoft, we have started actively working on Windows, and now we have four contributors uh, working in this space, and two of them have become long-term maintainers. We uh, started with improving quality of the PyTorch build, so we added test automation uh, to bring it on par with Linux. Uh, we improved tutorials, so new users of PyTorch have great experience learning uh, PyTorch on Windows. And this release, our major release, the features that we have enabled is distributed training. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in, uh, on the next slide. Uh, we also partnered with, uh, with Amazon on bringing Windows support to TorchServe, and Elijah Rippert's worked on uh, bringing Windows support to uh, Java bindings as well. Great thank you here as well. So distributed training. First of all, it's available now uh, in the uh, latest 1.7 uh, version of PyTorch. So if you install it uh, on Windows, you'll have the binaries that support distributed training already. Uh, both multi-GPU and multi-node uh, configurations are supported. Uh, one caveat here, though, is we haven't spent much time testing multi-node yet, so please expect it uh, to be uh, unstable at this point. But we plan to uh, do additional testing in the upcoming releases. PyTorch has two types of distributed training, distributed data parallel and a new RPC framework. In this release, we're enabling distributed training, distributed data parallel uh, mode, uh, and we look forward to enabling uh, RPC in the upcoming release as well. RPC uh, is exciting new feature that is going to be used in a, a variety of the new features of PyTorch. So it's important to bring that to Windows as well. 
The situation is a little bit more complicated on the distributed training backend front. Uh, in the current release, we are enabling Glue backend, but the Nickel and MPI uh, backends are not currently supported. The situation with Nickel is even more complicated because uh, Nickel is uh, supported by NVIDIA and NVIDIA doesn't provide support for Windows platform. So we'll have to work with NVIDIA in figuring out uh, what's the plan here uh, for Nickel backend. With that, we, uh, we are ready to dive in and to, do, uh, uh, to actually see in action how PyTorch and Windows works. So what I have here is a, a Azure Virtual Machine equipped with a powerful GPUs. So let's see in NVIDIA SMI, uh, you can see that we have two NVIDIA V100 GPUs on this machine. So that should be uh, plenty of horsepower to uh, do some uh, speed up improvement uh, for our uh, model training. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, I also have uh, PyTorch, latest version of PyTorch installed here, of course, 1.7 with, uh, with uh, uh, CUDA support. And now we can go uh, to PyTorch tutorials and see uh, what kind of uh, sample we can use here. So PyTorch tutorials, uh, as I mentioned, we have improved some of them and uh, uh, actually all of them and um, enabled their smooth operation on Windows platform. So let's choose this uh, getting started with distributed data parallel. So this tutorial, uh, guides users through three examples of various types of distributed data parallel training, and it provides sample code to perform uh, that on their own machine. You can see that we added some Windows-specific instructions here to make sure that the uh, users succeed on the Windows platform. I have copied the source code into my uh, virtual machine, so now we have this uh, tutorial represented in my Visual Studio Code environment, uh, and we can uh, uh, do a uh, spend a little bit of time exploring what uh, models we're actually going to try, and then uh, run this example. So first comment that you you might have uh, you might see here, or first point that you can you you see here is uh, initialization method. Uh, PyTorch supports three initialization methods: uh, TCP, uh, IP com uh, communication, environmental variables, and uh, remote file store. So currently, that's one of the limitations of the release is we only support remote file store. So this is where we special, uh, specify the path to the, to the file, which is used by workers to communicate their configuration settings to each other. In this uh, case, we use single machine with multiple GPUs. So we are just using local file for uh, communication between two workers, two uh, worker processes running on the same machine. Uh, for the case of distri uh, real distributed training um, across multiple machines, you'd want to use a remote file system or place the file on the remote file system. Let's explore what uh, models uh, we are going to try here. So in this tutorial, uh, there are three models that have been tried. The first one is a simple two-layer network. And uh, what tutorial does, it basically does a distributed training using standard, standard distributed data parallel model to uh, train this uh, model uh, across two GPUs and aggregate uh, the gradients from, from, from both of them. So standard um, mode of training the model on multiple GPUs. The second example is illustrating how checkpoint syn synchronization can be done. So again, it trains a model, but then it uh, one of the workers saves the checkpoint. So rank zero saves the checkpoint. And then uh, another worker loads the checkpoint. And between those two, we use distributed training barrier synchronization to make sure that the actions happen in the correct sequence. That's another example of distributed data parallel concept uh, now available on Windows. And final example here actually il illustrates how um, distributed model parallel training can be done. It trains one layer on one GPU and then passes data to the second GPU to train uh, the second layer. So this uh, model parallel training is becoming more and more important uh, with the introduction of the large NLP models. And one last point on this script before you run it is how it actually runs. So you can see that this script automatically spawns number of workers that is necessary uh, depending on the number of GPUs. The world size, will, in our case, will be a number of GPUs. So now we can 
All we need to do is basically run this script. Let's see. And we can monitor its progress using NVIDIA SMI. You can see that now both GPUs are utilized by our script. So now it's currently uh, started running the second example, the checkpointing example. And we can see that the load is a little bit greater and it goes uh, asynchronously between GPUs, but then it uh, levels up. And finally, the second model parallel training is also kind of a more asynchronous, uh, operates in a more asynchronous manner. You can also see here in the NVIDIA SMI that it uh, actually spawns multiple Python processes to uh, utilize uh, uh, various uh, two GPUs cards at the same time. So with that, uh, you have seen uh, how simple it actually is uh, of running distributed data parallel uh, on Windows. It's very similar to Linux and just as easy to run it on uh, Windows these days uh, as, it, uh, as it is on Linux. With that, we conclude our demo. Thank you very much for uh, watching this segment. Uh, uh, I'm Maxim Lukyanov. Uh, please uh, send me a message if you have any questions or ideas about PyTorch on Windows. Uh, and have a great rest of your PyTorch developer day. <laughs>